So we're doing this bit again? Yep. It's pretty repetitive. Yep. So let's get started. All right. Why do we have to wear these ridiculous ties? So, hello everyone, welcome to Half in the Bag, uh, episode one, Connor edition. I'm here. Uh, we're gonna be talking about our cool and epic lifestyle playing video games, and how we're going to start by talking a, a game that was released before either of us were born. Um, I got into it probably about six years ago, seven years ago, and um, it's, it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. The sequel is, in my opinion, the greatest game ever made. So I've played Half-Life probably six or seven weeks ago. Uh, yeah, for the first time. Yeah, and only because... Uh, I was... kind of forced them to. And also it was a dollar on Steam. That's true, that's true. And I know most people are thinking, oh, well, Half-Life 2 is the good game, why play Half-Life 1? But I like to be acquainted with the lore, you know? And Watching a Jacksepticeye playthrough, you know, it's, it's, just not, it's just not the same. I wish Jacksepticeye played that. Anyway. Oh, God! Hi! Oh, are you one of those Minecrafts? Dude, that's a heckin' Minecraft right there! We probably will have, I think, differing opinions. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, we've already we've slightly discussed this a little bit before. Only a little bit. But in so you know, we do have differing opinions, but we also have a lot of similarities right. in our opinion. Um, so don't, don't just think that this is going to be boring, like gaming good, video yeah, game gaming good. Video game good. This uh, big influence. It's king of world. Yeah, it's probably going to uh, end in horrific violence. So yeah, just like the game. Just like the game. And Half in the Bag, episode 41, Pixels. Uh, so I guess, Connor, do you have any opening statements just to say your um, stance on the game? Because I have I Well, you know, I, uh, Half-Life was definitely like a pioneer in storytelling in a video game. We, we, we've never seen a video game tell a story like that in an unbroken first-person narrative. I mean, you had... You know, games like Doom and Quake that would, you know, have a level, and then it would give you text that says what happened in that level. But you would never hear, you never see, you wouldn't see what was moving the story along. And, like, we wouldn't have games as we know them today without it. And, I mean, there's not, it's not that games didn't also have a story, but you mentioned Doom and Quake. Those were both big inspirations for the game, but the biggest thing about Half-Life, I think, is the... There are no cutscenes, so there, there's no breaks. You're always playing the game, right? And it's 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 also really creative because you're 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 always playing the game, and there's no breaks. But it also does give you time to think. Right. Like it, it's not just like you're constantly shooting. You're thinking. There's puzzles. There's 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 still downtime without you taking a break. Right. And I think I that's 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 one of the things that I also really respect about it. Right. I think the biggest thing for me was uh, the atmosphere. Was just yes. this vast underground laboratory, probably too vast to be realistic. Like you don't explore all of it, right? You don't. Like, you don't even scratch the surface right, of it. Because it was inspired by uh, Stephen King's short story. It was short story. Do I have it? I do. The Mist. Was it really? Well, not inspired, but it drew inspiration from several places. It wanted to scare you like Doom, quotes uh, one of the people made it. Doom uh, is not scary anymore. 
In 1990s, it, it was. Okay, well, all right, fine. And being acquainted with this book, uh, you can act, you can definitely tell where the inspiration sort of leaked in because it's this is very different, obviously, if you know this book or movie. Just sort of this nightmarish unknown because it's yeah. it's these scientists and these laboratory people. I mean, you play as uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, <laughs> He's not just a scientist. He's also like a cool. He's he's a cool guy. Resident cool guy. Well, I mean, he well he he's the player. You know, he's you know right. you can either you can choose to like you have some degree of choice in this. Like you can, you know, Gordon's personality is your own. You can either choose to you know help the scientists try actually attempt to help the scientists get out, or you can slaughter everyone in your path with no consequence. Right. There is no consequence. There's no consequence. Because it's a 90s first-person shooter. Well, sometimes you'll, like, die if you hit, do something wrong. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, you needed him to get out. Subject genius. terminated. <laughs> Subject terminated. Well, what you have is sort of four very distinct games mashed into this one overarching story. Like, what do you mean? Uh, it starts off very straightforward horror. First-person shooter horror. Then, around, like, chapter two or three, I think it's three. It becomes a Way very more high octane. It become well. You get introduced. I think it, the chapter is called "We Have Hostiles." Yeah, we've got and hostiles. Yeah. It's very sort of like on a dime. It turns into a very straightforward like action. Yeah, like military is in yeah. here. You're, it's like oh crap! Like things are going crazy. Yeah, and, and then it turns into like a. I'm 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 just theorizing where you're going. It turns into like a sci-fi laser gun kind of thing. It, it mixes the two. Yeah, it mixes the two, and then suddenly you get full sci-fi. Yeah, and that's the fourth part. Um, but the third part, where it's the mix in the two, goes on for the majority of the game, very 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 long time. But it starts off that horror, and even into that first, even into the military stage, that first this is probably the strongest start to a game probably that I've played in a long time because you have this sort of just introduces you into this atmosphere that introduces you into the mechanics and you figure everything out yourself right mm -hmm. and there's the gravity mechanic the way just the guns and the everything just handles the way you the player like yeah. handles especially mainly us because of the engine yeah which, and you, most yeah. famous part I would say in terms of legacy I mean Kind of, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Right. And then things go wrong in the quantum reactor. The anti-mass spectrometer starts a resonance cascade. I like this game a little bit too much. And then you black out for an unknown amount of time. Is there? Do you it's know? probably around like I don't know, thirty minutes or something. Yeah, it's not it does, that like long. The, 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 the cascade does not take long to just mess. The right. Whole facility up. You black out for a little bit, but but by the time you wake up, just everything is just in utter chaos. Horrible. So you're seeing the aftermath already. Right. And then there's almost like a progression of enemies. Like you see the head crabs, then you see the zombie people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Called. The head crab zombies. Yeah. Yeah. And then you slowly you figure out these enemies and you figure out how you beat them. And then there's a very like. It makes it feel very natural, like if you actually were in the situation. It doesn't. This is, this is how you would be seeing it. This is how you would be introduced. To right, it. but it also feels very progressive. Like you start out sort of easy, and then you get progressively more difficult. But it also feels like okay, this is chaos. This guy's just thrown into this just right. absolute like hell. And I think there's also like a sense of dread and guilt because you're the one who did it. You don't right, really know what's happened, but you're the one responsible for all this crap that's going right, down. And then, well, I want to talk about its legacy, actually. Because it's difficult to talk about this old game in 2020 without... Without mentioning up. what it did for the industry. Right. Because, like, I mean, like, I, w I wish we could just say, like, hey, this, 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 and this, but, like... You know, when we're talking about a new game, it just feels so different to talk about. Because this does hold up, I would say. Oh, it, it totally does. It totally does. Well, I wouldn't say totally, because well, it... There are, it, I mean, the AI. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to that in our yeah. negative parts, but... It, as Like, I played this. It took me a while to play it just because I was doing other stuff. Not because it was difficult, or... Yeah. I mean, there were a couple parts I got stuck on just because some the AI, and also just uh, 
bored and just like stupid bosses. Not bosses, but just stupid uh, sequences. Like, sequences, yeah. And it was probably a bit slower paced for most modern uh, gamers, but um, I would say that for the most part it definitely holds up just in the story uh, and just the. I mean, the shooting mechanics and the engine, I would say, just. It feels very they feel, good. They feel so satisfying. Like, when you land, like, a. You know, whenever you right click on the shotgun and you have the double fire and you landed that and you knock them out, that's just like. Woo! Right. Um, the, hun the unsung hero of Half Life 1 is the music and the lack thereof. So, like, if you go ahead and you go to Spotify and you listen to the soundtrack album. Actually, I use YouTube Music. It's like a sampler track. You have, you'll realize that, hey, this is like a 12 hour game, but the soundtrack is an hour? Probably. Like 50 minutes? And then you sit there and you wonder, like, where was all this music? And if you, if you go back, the music was used very scarcely. It would play at key moments. Like, for example, whenever the military first started coming here, you got the... And stuff like that. But most of the soundtrack is super ambient. And it's super quiet and subdued. And so it just sort of creates this eerie feeling across the entire game that just kind of like... It you know, amplifies what... that nightmarish. Like, yeah, and it does. And, and you know that... Um, you know, sometimes the music plays when there's no enemies, but it suddenly keeps you on edge because you think they're about to show up at any second. Right. And whenever the music did get intense, you know, it was like, it was like, oh crap, here we go. Like, suddenly yeah. it's like, you're about to do something super big. Point is, soundtrack, pretty good. But, pretty um, good soundtrack. Um, Not the best, but it's, it's, it's good. It's good for what it is, which, I mean, most of the game is silent. Yeah, and and I think I think they did that on purpose, and I think that's why I actually like the soundtrack more. Because if you know if that music was playing the whole time, I probably wouldn't care. But it's because it's used so scarcely that it's right. so it makes effective. it matter. So I guess I'll use the music to segue into some of the more negative. So, so there are a couple bad things. Really, I think mostly one of the things was something that just didn't age well, and that was the AI. Because like if you look at the AI, and I'm sure you can agree, it's bad. It's it's bad, it's terrible, it sucks. Um, now, in 1998 though, that was like top tier. Like nothing had ever come that close. And so I'm just, you know, but it was it's just a pain to trudge through the game and like, you know, like you, you'd walk, like you'd have the trailing mission, right? You'd walk five steps and then like the scientist team just get stuck behind a corner. He's like, hey, where do I go? It's like, I mean, a lot of it was optional. I really liked that you could have uh, the, in, the NPCs just follow you, or the scientists that you would find, and then they I refuse to go another step! Yeah. And then, and then you would take a step and you'd go, Why are you leaving me? <laughs> there's the part where there's like a sniper tower up in, like, across a wall. And then, but it's like, you, do you remember the sniper stuff where it's like they the shoot at you stuff, yeah. and you can't shoot back? You're, you're supposed to throw a grenade in there. Okay, well, if you were smart, you throw a grenade. But if you're me, uh, you have to escort this uh, NPC into a door, and he's the only one you, that can open the door. Yeah. And I spent hours just really? doing the same step. You didn't because, think of, like, lobbing a grenade? No, 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 it wasn't just that. He just kept getting stuck. And, oh. like, and then I would, we would finally get to the door, and he wouldn't open the door. There was a lot of like really fun mechanics as well. Like it, it wasn't just a straightforward like Doom shooter. Just right. Like, yeah. There were a lot of puzzles. The puzzles, and, like, creativity. The puzzles were really, really like I, I remember one bit that I remember being stuck on, and then suddenly having like the biggest eureka moment was when you had the train crash into the room with the water in it, and you went down and you hit the planks to get the barrels to come up. Yes. I was like, I, I was like, I'm a genius. I feel like it's so gratifying. It's yeah. definitely so gratifying when you solve a physics puzzle in that game. Uh, there was a lot of uh, shift tab www.ign.com slash half-life slash walkthrough. <laughs> so I think I should talk about my biggest, uh, I guess, gripe or Qual nitpick. <laughs> I wouldn't 
call it a nitpick because if you're if you're about to talk about on a rail, that's definitely well, that's part of it. Yeah. Uh, the pacing of the last like five hours of the game, I would say. How long, how long do you think the game is? For, how it's like, gonna be like first... a twelve hour game. Yeah, for I think most that was people. And I don't much. think I think I think probably only the pacing for the last like I don't know maybe three hours for me. I think starting with on a rail. Who thought to put that in a video game? I don't know, especially especially because like there's so many loading zones and you're going back and forth and it's just like I think I glitched through the whole thing. Like I I think I lost the minecart thing. I just sort of like glitched my way through the rails. I think that was the only part where I like genuinely didn't know what to do. I mean, on a rail is just just a horrible, horrible chapter. You see, everything between on a rail and Zen was fine for me. Okay, that's where I think we're gonna disagree. So okay. what was the chapter right after on a rail? I can't remember. It was... Was that you Forget About it? Freeman? No. There was something in between on a rail and Forget About Freeman. Okay, I remember now, I remember. Because on a rail, you see like this rocket, right? That's the rocket. I like the rocket No, part. no, no. Let me finish. You launch the rocket up into the the moon or whatever. What, yeah. what does the rocket do? Oh, oh okay, so it's uh, it sets up a satellite that um, alerts the rest of the world, hey, this is what's going on, and it also uh, sets up some of the mechanics, say, oh, no. In Half-Life 2? No, it back? well, it, do, it, does, it does do some things in Half-Life 2, but um, it, it sets up a relay for you to be able to access Zen later. Okay. See, I thought, because you spoiled it. I spoiled it? Wait, what was yeah. that I spoiled? Yeah, we were on our way to Rise of Skywalker, and you were like, so, how have you been enjoying Half-Life? I was like, yeah, it's okay. And he said, are you in space yet? <laughs> and I was probably, like, in, I was stuck in half, um, on a rail. <laughs> and so I started seeing uh, the rocket, and I was like, I'm going to get on the rocket. I'm going to go on the rocket and go to space. Yes, because you spoiled it. You said, are you in Zen? You, you said, are you in Zen yet? I was like, what's Zen? And then you said, you know, the alien planet that you go to. Press the button to launch the rocket. And then the, that, the like, valve, not the valve intro, but the, the like, theme. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that music. Hazardous sort of Environments. That's right. the name of the song. It sort of starts off in the background, you're like, okay, something really cool is about to start happening. Because you're finally on the surface. This is like the first time you've gotten to the surface. Oh, well, the military people, uh, they get leave. you. Oh, you, they do get you, yeah. They get you, they throw you in the trash. That's the one cutscene-ish yeah. thing. Well, it's because you're yeah. in the logic of the game. But the point is, that was a really cool moment to just completely nerf the player. Okay, that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. Um, you get, uh... These assassins, people. Th those are black. So those were those black were, ops. Yeah, th that was black ops sent out to. S so they decided. So the whole point of sending the military in was that they're trying to cover up the incident. Right. And um, however, they realized that the military were sucking at their job, so they sent in the black ops to kill the marines. Really? Yes. I missed that. Yeah, was the that black ops were there. Yeah, the black ops were there to kill the marines. I don't remember that. Well, they were. I mean, you have to. Like, it, it's, it's, you have to listen to like the the NPCs dialogue and stuff. This game had sound. <laughs> you get to the side of the mountain, and right when you come out there, you come out of a pipe and you get to the side of the mountain, and it's like you look out and you see just this vast, vast, just like area of land of just desert, right? Yeah. There's no lab. There's no military people. It's just land. You come out to the side of the mountain, and then that valve theme starts playing a little bit. The down, down, do, do. Yeah. That's the Breaking Bad intro. I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> but um, they're they're very similar. But um, and that starts playing. I think this. It's the ending of the game. <laughs> it's like two thirds uh, in, probably. Yeah. But it just it, keeps going. And then you get to this, and then you get to the RPG, and you start shooting at the helicopter. And I was like, okay, I've gotten so strong. Someone's gonna come in, and they're gonna like throw me into an alien portal, and that's how the game's gonna end. Which that is sort of what happens at the end. Yeah, that is sort of what happens. But 
like four hours later. And then you beat the helicopter, and then you just go back into another tunnel, and then you fight like all of these tanks, all of these military people, and then you're like swimming in the water canals, and you jump up, you shoot a bunch of people, and it's fun. I'm like, okay, Where this is, this is going? still going on, right? And then you go back into the lab and forget about Freeman happens. Yeah. And I think Forget About Freeman was probably the lowest point that I felt in the game. Really? Not that, just the beginning, because they throw you in this room and it's just, that's when it started to feel repetitive for me. Because On a Rail was bad. That was my least favorite part of the game. But I knew that there was still more game to come that I was looking forward to. Right. With Forget About Freeman, I was like, it's just going to be the same thing. How much more is this? I want cool stuff to happen. It is repetitive, right? Like, you, you it have is, to admit, It is a little bit repetitive. Well, in the sense but I think of... It's, I think it's worth it. No, no, no. But in the sense of you're in the lab... Well, in the sense of you're on the surface, you go in the lab. And then, we've got to get out of here! And then... You finally make it, but then the military's up there, so you got to get back down because they're bombing everything. You got to go back in the lab. Then you make it to the surface again, and you're shooting a rocket into the moon. That you, or whatever. You're shooting a satellite. It's a satellite. <laughs> you're going you're setting to steal up a satellite. The moon. But then you're not quite done, so you have to go back into the lab, and then uh, Black Ops come and throw you into the trash compactor from Star Wars. And then you're on the surface, and you're on the surface, and you finally made it. And it's like you could just run from that side of the mountain. You could just climb down and just run in the desert. Someone would find you. Up until Forget About Freeman, you're just like, how much more are we going to cycle through? Right. But, but, there is a but. Because uh, you continue, and like you said, they start doing more platforming stuff. And then you get into the... Uh, Lambda Lab. Right, but what was the chapter name where it was um, questionable ethics? Questionable ethics. Yes, that's that 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 was like that was the chapter that cemented this as like okay, this is awesome. Right, like, this is that like that's what cemented it as like this is one of my favorite games. Yes, I agree, and that also progresses the story a little it bit. It progresses the story a whole lot because that's when you find out that Black Mesa has known about these aliens this whole time. As the title of the chapter would suggest. Well, you're, the title chapter begins when you you come in from a sewer and you come into a room full of the the dog, the hound animals, guys, the hound, whatever, the hound guys, yeah, they're and they're guys. all in like cages. So you continue. Oh, and then when you're and then you open the main doors from in questionable ethics. Yeah, the front doors, and you go out. And what causes you to go back in from that? Um, or am I completely out of order? So, so questionable ethics. Uh, questionable ethics is its own lab. That's where they have the. Uh, that's where you have the tau cannon. Right, I remember. And um, then you have to leave because the lambda lab is a di is a separate building on another area of the campus. Right. Okay. So you have to go through, and that uh, that's when you fight the helicopter on the dam. That was boring. I didn't like a lot of. I think a lot of the stuff after questionable ethics. And then, but then you get to lambda lab though. And then the lambda lab was like you get. The, you get the, uh, the big, the big boy, the big blue one. Right. But that's yeah. at the, that's towards the ending. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Right. And, but then you have to go in and you have to do this stupid cut or you have to protect the, the scientist guy as he opens the portal, which is probably like the most repeated part I had to do. I could not do that. You could? No. Yeah. All you have to do is just knock out those flying guys with the crossbow. I could that I died so many times to that. Is that just me? Uh, I mean, like, I, what, what you what you need to do is just like you know, just shoot each of those boys twice with the crossbow, and then they'd be done. I think I wasn't I wasn't using the crossbow. Yeah, were you like trying to use like what like? I was trying game? to conserve ammo because I well, didn't, I didn't know. Well, that leads me into the final point. I thought it was just going to be. Uh, you go into the portal, and then that's straight into the boss, the final boss. No. But there are three more chapters. Little did okay, I Okay, so the next section of the game is kind of... Zen I did not mind. The first, like, mini-boss, whatever, I didn't really mind that much. The the gargantuan? The gargantuan. What's the chapter after that? Interloper. When, that's, like the, that's like the facility where they're, like, mass-producing the, the alien factory. grunts. And that was awful. Yeah, oh, it was bad. That factory 
went on forever. Yeah, no, that was. I'm not gonna lie. That was like I told you. They didn't play test it. They didn't. They 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 didn't have anybody come in and say like, "Hey, this is too long." They just like, they were running low on time, and so they just slapped that last bit together, and they were like, "All right, we, we're shipping it." The final boss made up for it though. Personally, the design. Oh, the design of it. Yeah, like that was cool. Now. The fight this did not. It did not do a good job of telling you what you were supposed to do. Because in every no. every video game final boss, like, like the, the, it's it, you know, there's always something indicating what you do. And when it, in the remake, they definitely indicate way on a much much um, better scale what's happening, what you're supposed to be doing, what you're supposed to be shooting at. Whereas Half Life One, it's just like. You're supposed to shoot this crystal on the wall uh, that you don't even know is there. Yeah. The rest of the time. Yeah. And then you have to like fly up, and then you're supposed to unload like 800 rockets into his forehead. But like the last little cutscene with with, with G-Man made up for it. But yes. Well, wait. Before that though, there's like a really long, uh, like him the final boss dying sequence yeah. or like animation, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, kind of like when you beat the Ender Dragon in Minecraft. It goes like, it like, sorry. Don't compare Half-Life to Minecraft. It, it, they're, they're very similar games, actually. <laughs> no, they're not. But, Do you remember the end credits when the two guys are talking? It's like that with G-Man and is. Gordon. <laughs> but there are the little Volt, what do you call them? Vortigons? Vortigons at the bottom. He spawns them in towards his later phase, right? And so they're still on the ground. I haven't killed them all. So I've just been ignoring them, focusing on that, and so it's like an animation. But those guys are still alive, and so I was watch I was looking up, I was on the ground, I was looking up oh, watching the animation. Oh yeah, that was animation. your fault. That was your fault. You were supposed to be killing those guys. Well, I didn't. I fortunately I survived, and I I'm not sure if I would have had to spawn back and do it again. But that was a very very close call. I think I was on like two health. <laughs> but like you said, G man, that cutscene right there. Um, added so much to the lore. He was like, like you know, I was like, the, I sat there and I watched it. I was like, first of all, I know that voice. I've heard that voice before. Holy cow! This is the guy. This is the mean man. Second of all, second of all, I was sitting there and I was like, if what we just did was like a petty employment, like a odd job for this man, who is? It was he? an audition. It was an odd. It was. It was. That's exactly what it was. It was an audition. So, like, you know, you know, the the, the character of the G Man. I mean, I guess we'll talk about this if we do like a Half Life Two review. We will. The, the the character of the G Man has always just intrigued me, and it's always it, it's always been captivating. Everything from his appearance to his speech. Stop. Dude, well, yeah. Game Theory already said who G Man was. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> The G in G-Man stands for Gasser. <laughs> so I haven't played Half-Life 2, so I don't know what the what developments we have towards the overarching story. Don't get your hopes up. But no, I know it's we, not much. We never figure out who G-Man is. Even in Alex, does it no. expand? It expands though a little bit. I mean that you just kind of see more of the extent of his powers a little bit, but like it, you know, you don't really his story, his motivation. You don't, you don't get his story, you don't get his motivation. We he just never... talks about the same kind of crap that he talks about in Half-Life right. 1. My employers, you know. But the point is that there is no point. You don't know. You, you never don't get know. to know. And it's 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 like with a game, you know, it it reminds you of what made the beginning chapters of this game so well is that you just don't know. Right. And I like that it doesn't. And you still don't know. And we still don't. Thirty know. years later. <laughs> Twenty two years later, we don't know. Right. And I think I think I think that's that's fantastic. Eventually, you know, they're going to have to like. You know, if they decide to keep making Half-Life games, because that, Alex just came out, but like, you know, will they actually make more? Who knows? Like, well, I mean, I'll I have think... to explain it at some point. I don't think they do. Well, I maybe. think there are some things that do not ever need to be explained. That's true. In I mean, and I think, and I would prefer that actually. I would prefer that. Like, I, I was, I was actually going to get to that, but I feel like. Because, you know, what, what's happening at Valve right now is that the writers that they have are a completely different batch from the ones who started out. Uh, Gabe was replaced by a robot years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's great that it's never explained. I think that more 
elements in stories or games like Half-Life or even movies or shows or just narrative formats should have elements that are never explained and are not meant to be explained. Like The Shining. The Shining did that. Uh, I think a better example would be the 1977 uh, cult classic Eraserhead directed by David Lynch. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's doing this yeah. in the background. Yeah. He, David Lynch has famously said... <laughs> Where I agree with you, atmosphere, music, storytelling, um, on a rail, <laughs> on a rail. I disagree with you on um, the the last few chapters before Zen, because like I think that other between on a rail and Zen, I still think you know just doing more of that stuff. Like it's not as compelling compelling narratively, but you know the gameplay is still fun. And that's where I think I, and you know, I... We disagree. Yeah, we disagree. I really liked it a lot. Uh, I think it aged well. Aged. But it could have aged better. It didn't age as I well as its you successor. Can, I think most people can play it if you take it knowing what it is. Because yeah. I was expecting a Doom. You were, Not expecting, that I think, you were expecting like a Doom. I was expecting, I had no, no, I went into this knowing nothing other than a meme about G-Man. Yes. I, I sort of only played Half-Life 1 so that I could play Half-Life 2, and what I realized was that I had no idea anything about it as soon as I opened the game. You see, when I when I went in, I was expecting just more like Portal-style stuff, because I, I was a big fan of the Portal games. I wasn't expecting that. And I knew that, you know, I had heard, like, this was my first, my very first first-person shooter. Because like you know, I was I was I was a young bab, and I was like, I like the Portal games, and I heard Half Life is in the same universe. So um, I recommend this game uh, to pretty much anyone that would like enjoy a first-person shooter and something that's maybe a bit slower, but definitely has its fast, intense moments. Moments, yes. Very fun game. Uh, do you have any adding thoughts? Um, uh, 